Welcome to this online lesson on the Plains Indians, surviving on the plains. The aim of this lesson is to investigate the lifestyle and culture of the Plains Indians. Now, I'm going to hit upon one thing straight away. What should we call the Plains Indians? Well, to some, the Plains Indians might not be seen as the best term for them. After all, they're not Indian, are they? Another thing about this is that sometimes people would refer to these people as the Native Americans, or perhaps even the First Nations. I'm going to mostly call them the Plains Indians, or simply the Indians. This is what is done in the GCSE textbooks that uh, most of my students will be using, and I'm standardising on this language. I don't mean any offence by using that term, and if you're used to hearing a different term for these people, then by all means use that in your answers. I'll be the first to admit that as a white Englishman, I understand very little about the true meanings of Plains Indians culture, although I am fascinated by it and I do try to understand it even better. So, I'm going to standardise my language in that way, but bear in mind that this can be a sensitive topic. Why? Because ultimately, white European settlers destroyed their way of life. And that has created, understandably, tension and regret from all sides. So, without further ado, we're going to have a look at some of the really ingenious ways in which these incredible people survived in very harsh conditions. Firstly, we're going to consider the conditions on the Great Plains. The Great Plains of America are an incredible landscape. They stretch for millions of square kilometres. They are nothing but grassland with very few trees, very few rivers, and the wildlife there 200 years ago was very different to what you would find now. There was basically no farmland, and herds of millions of buffalo roamed over the landscape. And this is the environment in which the, the Plains Indians lived. Here are some features of the uh, landscape and the ecosystem of the Great Plains. The conditions on the Great Plains were incredibly harsh. It was very difficult to survive there. There were few rivers, so it was too dry, dry for trees to grow. Very hot summers were there as well. Half of the rainfall found in the eastern USA. Hailstorms, thunderstorms and in places tornadoes could be found. Grazing buffalo destroyed saplings before they could grow. Few rivers and streams for drinking water. And lastly, extremely cold winters. Your first task then is to get a bit of an understanding as to what the conditions on the Great Plains were like. Firstly, note down headings, low rainfall, few trees and climate extremes. Then, list the above facts under those correct headings. You can pause the video now while you complete that task. Pause now. OK, let's go through them one by one. Few rivers, so too dry for trees to grow. Well, you might have put that under low rainfall, but it probably fits better under few trees. Very hot summers. Well, that would relate to climate extremes. Half of the rainfall found in the eastern USA. That'll be low rainfall. Hailstorms, thunderstorms and in place tornadoes. That would relate to climate extremes as well. Grazing buffalo destroyed saplings before they could grow. Few trees. Few rivers and streams for drinking water. Well, that could be low rainfall. And lastly, extremely cold winters would also be climate extremes. As you can appreciate, it would be a very, very challenging place to live, even with modern technology. So how the Plains Indians managed it with very little technology was even more incredible. Well, let's find out one of the crucial ways that they were able to do this. Part of the way that the Indians survived was by organising into their own societies or tribes. Some of the, the tribes are listed on the screen. Although it has to be said that this is only a tiny selection of the tribes that were on the Great Plains. The Blackfoot, the Crow, the Lakota Sioux, the Cheyenne, the Arapaho and the Pawnee are just some of the tribes who are well known for living on the Great Plains. Though it should be realised that the Native Americans or First Nations, call them what you will, uh, lived in many different ecosystems within the United States, including in the, the East, in the Appalachian Mountains, in the Rocky Mountains and even in the South. For example, the Pueblo Indians uh, produced more permanent settlements rather than living a nomadic lifestyle. We're going to concentrate really on the Great Plains, though. The First Nations is a term that in more modern times has been used to describe the Plains Indians. For them, America as a country didn't exist. Each tribe had its own customs and traditions, very much like a nation. Your task, then. On your own copy of the map, which you can draw, or you can find a link to a suitable map in the description, and on the approximate locations of each of the Indian nations. 
It should be recognised, though, that these were nomadic tribes that travelled, and so their borders would perhaps overlap, that could indeed lead to conflict, and they wouldn't necessarily stay in the same place. Then, explain why the Indians' nomadic lifestyle means that these locations cannot be precise. Below are reasons why the Plains Indians moved west from the east of the American continent to live on the Plains. Decide which factors pushed the Indians onto the Plains. Explain how this factor pushed them there. This is more of a geographical skill, but it's a useful historical one too. And then which factors pulled or attracted the Indians west. Explain how. Here are the factors. And as a challenge, what survival challenges would you expect life on the Great Plains to present to the Indian nations? Consider your answers to the previous task when doing that. So, factor number one. The Sioux were threatened by other tribes and settlers in the east, so they moved. Two, the settlers brought diseases like measles. The Indians lacked immunity, so they fled. It is true to say that where you lack immunity to a disease, it's even more deadly to you, and very often very mild diseases to the Europeans who are settling in the east could be fatal to the First Nations. Thirdly, the Indians gained horses, which made the journey west possible. And the plains were largely empty, but full of buffalo to hunt. Pause the video now while you complete these tasks. Okay, the Indians' nomadic lifestyle means that these locations cannot be precise, because the very meaning of the word nomadic is to live on the move. The thing is, the Indians used to follow the buffalo very often. And the buffalo wouldn't stay in the same place, the buffalo would just go wherever the food was. So if you relied on the buffalo, you had to follow them. Also, there would be movement depending on the time of year. For example, some Indian groups would move into lodges to live during the winter months. Part 3. Which of these are push factors and which are pull factors? The Sioux being threatened by other tribes and settlers is a push factor. That's something that is forcing them away from the east. Settlers bringing diseases is likewise a push factor, forcing them away. However, the Indians gaining horses is something that enables them to be pulled uh, to, towards the Great Plains. So that is more of a pull factor. And lastly, the Indians, were uh, the Indians found that the plains were largely empty but full of buffalo. That is something that's attracting them or pulling them towards the west. As a challenge, what survival challenges would you expect life on the Great Plains to present to the Indian nations? Well, you may have identified that there was very little rainfall and few rivers, so finding drinking water would be a challenge. Another would be that there were no trees, so building structures of any substantial nature would not be possible. Also, where would they get the food from? Well, only the buffalo were the main source of food that was available to eat, and so they would have to do. But luckily, the Indians were completely ingenious in their use of this valuable resource. Let's consider how they used the buffalo. The buffalo. The plains buffalo, which is actually a bison, but we always call them buffalo, was vital to the survival of many Native American tribes. Your task then. I've included in the description to this video a link to the BBC Bite Size Resources website on the Indian way of life and religion. Have a read of this information. On your own copy of the buffalo picture, or your own drawing if you're feeling brave, record the uses of the different parts of the buffalo. Then, record as a minimum the following. This is a handy way of remembering some of the main uses of the buffalo. Bit equals ABC. What that translates as, as bit bones, intestines and tanned hides equals arrowheads, buckets and clothes. Here's the thing, the Indians used the buffalo not just for food but for many other things too. The bones could be chipped and sharpened into arrowheads. The intestines could be cleaned and inflated and dried out and turned into buckets and, and water carrying bottles. Crucial when you might not come across water for days. And the tanned hides were able to be turned into clothes. Tanning is basically turning the uh, skin of the animal into a tough leather. Then secondly, explain how the buffalo provided much of what the Indians needed. You could use a short um, paragraph to do this, something like point example explain would be suitable. Then secondly, if the buffalo hunt failed, how would the lifestyle of the Plains Indians have been affected? Explain with some examples. You'll have to take some time over this as you're going to need to find the relevant part of the BBC uh, Bite Size website to see which parts you should use. I'll give you a bit of a clue though. Page 4 will be very useful on that website. Pause the video now while you complete these tasks. Done? Well, hopefully you've got some really detailed notes on how the Indians use the buffalo. The more, the better. 
So if the buffalo hunt failed, how would the lifestyle of the Plains Indians have been affected? Well, consider this. They would very often not have enough uh, resources in order to make water carrying uh, vessels. They also wouldn't have enough food to survive, especially through the winter, if they weren't able to have buffalo meat that they could dry. And also, they wouldn't necessarily be able to make comfortable clothes to wear in the harsh and extreme temperatures and climates of the plains. So, finding the buffalo and succeeding in the hunt really was a matter of life and death. And so, Indians could gain great honour through hunting the buffalo successfully, and they would take significant risks in doing so. We're now going to consider one particular tribe, the Sioux Indians. Now again, we run into a bit of a trick in terms of uh, the naming here. The Sioux did not call themselves the Sioux. They called themselves the Dakota, the Lakota, and a variety of other sub-tribes. However, European settlers tended to group them together into one term. We haven't got time to study all the Plains Indian nations, but we are going to focus on one for a while, the Lakota Sioux. The Sioux had a fascinating and varied culture. They were nomadic following the buffalo across the plains. They could be warlike, especially if they felt that others were encroaching onto their territory. And they had great respect for nature, the ancestors, and the great spirit that they called Wakan Tanka. They had their own culture, religion, language, and customs. Your first task, then, is to give your definition. Summarise some of this information. Who were the Lakota Sioux? Pause the video now while you do that. Okay, we're now going to move on to a more detailed research task based upon the Sioux way of life and indeed other Indian nations. This is a good example of Indian religion. George Catlin, the Buffalo Dance. George Catlin was a white artist who travelled around the Great Plains painting what he saw. He got on well with the Indians who let him watch their religious events. This is one of the religious events that he watched and he depicted it fairly accurately in one of his paintings. What items of hunting equipment can we see in the picture? What do we think the purpose of the dance was for the Indians? And then how trustworthy and reliable do we think this information in the picture is? Explain your answer. Pause the video while you have a go at those source-based questions. Items of hunting equipment that you may have noticed include clubs, axes, bows and indeed spears. There are other pieces of equipment in the picture as well. You might notice that the man at the left is holding a pipe. Pipes were used for smoking various substances in religious ceremonies. Another man is striking a drum. That would be crucial for keeping the beat in the dance. You'll notice too that these people are dressed in, uh, in clothes that suggest that they are acting like the buffalo in some way. So it's almost a religious or almost theatrical reenactment of the buffalo hunt itself. So what do we think the purpose of the dance was for the Indians? Well, the Indians so relied on the buffalo that they wanted to guarantee the, the spiritual help of their ancestors and of the great spirit in a successful and moreover safe buffalo hunt. Be under no illusions. A buffalo is about the size of a small car. If it hits you, it's probably going to be game over for you. So the Indians were taking some real risks when they hunted the buffalo. They would only take what buffalo they needed, and it, it could bring great honour on a person to be taking part in a successful buffalo hunt that would supply the rest of the tribe. But how trustworthy or reliable is this source? Well, from one point of view, it is quite reliable. George Catlin actually experienced these things, and he saw them, and he lived at the time that we are studying. On the other hand, though, he's bound to put some of his own European or white cultural uh, background into these paintings, perhaps exaggerating certain elements uh, for the interest of the people who would look at his paintings. For the most part, though, George Catlin had a good relationship with the Indians, and so his paintings provide us with a valuable source to understand their culture. Research task. The Lakota Sioux. You're going to produce a Sioux survival guide, again using the BBC Bite Size Information Pack. You could produce this as a booklet by folding in half a couple of pieces of A4 paper, or if you're not unsure as to whether that will give you enough space, you could just do it in an exercise book or indeed on a Word document. Page 1. This should have survival on the plains. Include three explained facts, at least one about the hunting of the buffalo. So what you're really looking for here is three developed paragraphs about how the Sioux were able to survive on the plains. Page 2 should be about the teepee. How was the teepee constructed? How was the teepee practical and comfortable? And did the teepee have any disadvantages for the Indians who lived in them? 
Page 3A is on where warfare. How did the Sioux fight? Find out the meaning of terms scalping and counting coup. The first one's a bit yucky, so be aware of that. Who did the Sioux fight and why? Page 3B, religion. What was the sun dance? Who or what did the Sioux worship? Who were the medicine men? And any other facts about Sioux religion that you find uh, important. Lastly, and as an extension, white settlers had very different views of the Sioux. For each section, explain what a white settler might have thought of the Sioux culture. It wasn't usually very positive. George Catlin, who we've already studied, was unusually enlightened as a white settler. Most were highly critical of the Indian way of life. And yet, the fact that they survived at all shows that their way of life really worked for them. This task will take you quite a bit longer, maybe as long as an hour, so give it the proper time for reading and creation that it, that it should expect. It will also be the last main task apart from the exam practice which we'll be doing on the following slides. So for now, pause the video while you complete this task. OK, if you've done that right, you should have a good detailed piece of work which you can use for revision purposes and which you can draw upon in the next exam questions. Let's have a look at applying the knowledge that you've just gained to an exam style question. You are now going to use the information that you've gathered to answer two questions, the first of which is a short one. Describe two features of how the Sioux used the buffalo. A four mark question should not take any longer than about five or six minutes to answer. In fact, the American West paper, paper two in Edexcel, will not ask you a four mark answer. However, this is a useful exam skill for other papers and a good way of testing your knowledge of this topic. To answer this question, you will need to give two examples of what they did with a buffalo and explain how each one helped them survive. If you pause the video here, you can give yourself six minutes to answer the question. Or if you think you might need a little bit more help, keep playing and I'll show you a writing frame that you can use. But don't feel that you have to. Here's the writing frame if you need it. One way the Sioux used the buffalo was, this helped them to survive because. Another way the Sioux used the buffalo was, this helped them to survive because. OK, whatever you're going to do, pause the video now and answer the question. Right, let's have a look at an example answer and see how you got on. Here's that question again. Describe two features of how the Sioux used the buffalo. One way the Sioux used the buffalo was as food. This helped them survive because buffalo meat could be dried into pemmican and eaten over the winter. So I've got one mark for mentioning that the buffalo were used as food and another mark for giving more detail as to how they were used as food. Two marks so far. Another way the Sioux used the buffalo was for clothing. This helped them to survive because the buffalo hide produced hard wearing clothing to survive the harsh climate of the plains. Again, that's another mark for identifying the use of clothing and another mark for identifying why that was so vital in the harsh climate of the plains. So four marks in total. You can pause the video in a moment and check your own answer and make any improvements that you need to. But if you've included a similar level of detail and two separate examples, then you can consider yourself to have got four marks. So why not write that in the margin and give yourself a pat on the back? Mark your own work now and press pause. Right, that's a good introduction. Let's have a look at a slightly longer answer. This is going to be the second of the two questions that we're going to answer. Explain two consequences of religion on the Indian way of life. Now this is a little bit more difficult. Here the examiner is going to split the marks into two. You're going to get four marks for your knowledge, so you've got to make sure that, that is detailed and accurate, and you're going to get four marks for your explanation. You must be identifying how examples of religion have consequences on how the Indians live. That's how you'll answer this question successfully. To answer this question, you'll need to give two ways that religion affected how the Indians lived and explain how that was a consequence. You should spend around 12 to 15 minutes on this answer. If you want to have a go with the maximum level of challenge, you can pause the video now and begin your answer. If not, you can look at the writing frame that I have included. Though again, don't feel that you have to use this. If you do, your writing is likely to become quite formulaic, which is not always what you want. One consequence of the religion, or, or of religion, sorry, on the Sioux way of life was, the consequence of this was, and this affected how they lived because. A second consequence of the religion on the Sioux way of life was, the consequence of this was, and this affected how they lived because. You have between 12 and 15 minutes to complete this question, and so, Pause the video now.
Hopefully you found that a little bit more difficult. If you did, then you've probably put the necessary detail in because you were really trying. If you found it really easy, make sure that you have put in the sufficient detail and linked it to consequences. Let's have a look at an example answer. Explain two consequences of religion on the Indian way of life. One consequence of religion on the Sioux way of life was their respect for nature. A consequence of this was that they did not waste the resources they used. For example, the Indians used all parts of the buffalo and would leave offerings for the great spirit. This has affected their way of life as the buffalo were able to provide most of what the Indians needed to survive. A second consequence of religion on the Sioux way of life was the use of dances. A consequence of this was the use of different dances for different important aspects of Indian life. For example, the buffalo dance was believed to bring success in the hunt. This affected how they lived because it meant that religion was tied up in all aspects of how the Sioux lived and it was something that could unite the tribe. Okay, you might want to pause the video here and make some improvements to your own answer and try and make sure it's as of similar detail and accuracy to my own. If you want to make some improvements to your answer now and have a go at marking it, remember there are four marks for knowledge and four marks for your explanation in terms of linking it to the effects on the Indian's way of life as a consequence of religion. Pause the video now. Okay, let's conclude. Many, but not all, white settlers disrespected the Plains Indians. They found their way of life very hard to understand and could be incredibly racist. Why might white settlers have found the life of Plains Indians savage? Consider the possible meanings of that word. Secondly, why is it not fair to call the Plains Indians savage? Explain with an example of their lifestyle. Once you've completed these tasks, I hope that you'll consider this lesson concluded and by all means go back and review any things that have not been clear. If it's been useful, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to this channel where there'll be lots of other resources on a variety of different topics. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye.